Well, we have another great uh, instructor from the uh, Black Hills Virtual Workshop this year. We have with us Charlie Borland. Charlie, thank you so much for coming to us virtually for the hey Photo guys, Bug Podcast. Hey, guys, thanks a lot for the invitation. I'm excited to uh, discuss photography with you. No problem. We're glad to have you. And you're coming all the way from the West Coast, isn't that correct? Uh, yeah, if you see the picture behind me, as far west as I could go, actually. But uh, <laughs> you know, seriously, I, I, I'm darn near at the edge of the, the West Coast here. So I'm in Central Oregon. Yeah, and in oh, spite okay. of what it looks like, he's not in Hawaii. Well, no, could, not quite. I'm just dreaming of being there. Well, yeah, he could be, he could be uh, off of one of the beaches here in Florida. Yeah, that could be. Uh, could yeah, be yeah. That could be a Florida could beach. Be. I like Florida. Although that water, it's I guess, would have to be southern Florida. Yeah. I don't think our golf looks quite Gulf that doesn't look that, that pretty, blue. but the other coaster <laughs> right. or around the Keys looks beautiful like that. So, well, anyway, Oh, yeah. Um, yep. So you're going to be instructing this year, and you know, you're know you kind of coming back. You've been an instructor in yes. the past, so you're coming right. back to see us. So tell us a little bit yeah, about that. Yeah, tell us about yeah. yourself. I uh, work with Chad Coppice, uh way back in the very beginning of the Black Hills photo shootout. I believe I was there three different years, but it might only be two, kind of all blends together when it was a long time ago. And I guess, you know, 10-year anniversary or something like that's happening This year, now. yes. And, um, so, yeah, I was teaching there um, the first couple seasons and taught cowboy portraiture and uh, product photography based on cowboy, or I should say, still life photography of products. And... Then did a little bit of Lightroom and a few other things like that back in the very first sessions. And uh, I'll be returning for the virtual summit next month. Good. And so I, what, do you, what uh, workshops will you be teaching at the virtual? This, this year, we're going to be doing the things that we thought would be best as a virtual summit, which is going to be uh, introduction to studio portraiture. Okay. And um, I'll discuss, you know, some things like these shots right here of you know, how to set up in a portrait studio, how to light your subject, what to look for. But but then again, depending on what you're doing as a portrait photographer, how to go beyond just the basics. And landscape photography, uh, despite being a commercial photographer for more than three decades, I still love landscape photography. And uh, so I'll be doing a seminar on that. And then also, uh, based on my commercial photography business, I was the founder and co-founder of two different stock photo agencies back in the 90s mm. and um, so I will be discussing the business of outdoor and nature photography I mean how to make money with your with your outdoor photography and just talking about um, going beyond clicking the shutter and then hoping somebody buys your picture to marketing pricing and uh, subjects that are more in da demand than other subjects so there'll be three seminars right there oh fantastic real good and uh, were you a commercial photographer now out in uh, Oregon? or uh, Yes. Yeah. To, how did you yeah. get involved with well, the uh, the Black Hills photo shootout in S South Dakota? Is that through Chad? Well, yes. I had a photo uh, workshop business um, in the early 2000s. We went for many years. And then the last recession, things slowed down too much. I kind of moved on to a few other things, waiting for it to improve. and. Never got back into it. So now I'm mostly a guest workshop instructor when I am going to physical locations. Uh, taught that one back with uh, Ben Wilmore and uh, Lewis Kemper and stuff like that. And Chad showed up out there in the Smoky Mountains and uh, took one of our workshops. And that's how we met. Oh, fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Well, Chad, I know he is, uh, I think he was one of the ones that uh, started. One of the, the founders. Uh, yeah. I think he and Les Flores. Yep. And yep. uh, so many of those have now dropped out and gone and off to other things. But Chad's mm -hmm. still there. And, yep. and I missed the very first year. I've been there since year two. And yeah. uh, so this would have been my ninth year. Well, I published a blog for a few years called Pro Nature Photographer and then ended up selling it to another photographer who's going to turn it into a magazine. And uh, interviewed Chad and uh, titled the interview as Chad Coppice has the dream job. <laughs> yes, he does. As far as I'm concerned, he always <laughs> does. I even tried to get him to hire me as his assistant, you know, just for for uh, 
one of those stable incomes rather than being a freelancer, which I've been since 1980, mm. 82. It's, and, that's uh, tough. I know that. I did that for nine years. I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm still here pounding the pavement, so to speak, in just different ways. Well, my, I drifted off into computers. I went back to school, yeah. became a programmer, but my passion for photography was never ebbed. I just didn't have to make a living at it anymore. So, Right, right. There is some appeal to that. You know, mm -hmm. the joy of photography versus the business of photography is a lot of people don't realize there is a huge difference between the two of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think the know, business side is the one that's usually lacking. Yeah. Plenty of people say, don't quit your day job, do photography for fun. <laughs> that's right. But I have no regrets, man. The adventures that I have been on uh, as a photographer has taken me so many places because I am a photographer. Mm -hmm. I have got to go to so many places. I've photographed amazing people, amazing locations, and stuff like that. So I really wouldn't trade it for anything. It's just someday it'd be nice to chill out for a while. Oh, here's my paycheck. Yep. <laughs> well, me neither. And uh, I got to meet some fantastic people, some great photographers, such as yourself. Yeah. And yep. um, so we want you have a website by any chance? Uh, uh, yeah, I have BorlandPhoto.com, which is my portfolio. Okay. And then I also have another website, which is my online classes. Good. And we want to put those down in here and encourage people to go out and check those out. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sure. And. Well. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, okay, my uh, portfolio website is borlandphoto.com. And then my online courses are at greatphotographycourses.net. Oh, good. Those are the two. Okay. Yeah, we're going to put good. those down yeah. here. And you have some photos, I understand, that you want to share with us. And yeah, our viewers. yeah. Well, um, as I just mentioned, the photography, being a professional photographer, has been a, a wild ride and a, and a big adventure. And I've gotten to do so much different stuff, which ranges from, uh, you know, photographing a few celebrities like Nike athletes that are quite famous, um, like Michael Jordan here. And um, I've also done a lot of corporate annual ports which took me all over the country photographing what most people look at as you're going to photograph that ugly machine <laughs> and it's like yeah I have to that's what they're hiring me to do but the thing about it is you go in there and you make that machine look luscious and beautiful and it's all comes in lighting and, and all that type of stuff and yep. these are a couple of the pictures from my corporate days here just to kind of give people an idea and it's one of the things that I've learned as a photographer, and now that I teach a lot, is I share this type of information with my students. I say, you know, you don't go out and take pictures when you're a professional photographer. You build photographs. And when you look at these corporate images here, you can see that I didn't just walk up and take a picture. I moved lights all over the place. I hid them behind things, and I put colored gels on them and I came up with ways to glamorize how they look and I think that's what's so important you can't just take a picture you have gotta build that photograph and that's where success comes in in photography and really it applies to anything photography related when it comes to trying to have a business or make a profession out of it is you've got to go beyond the typical photograph right and, and that, even what, that's what photography is, is capturing the light. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And when you think about it, um, even landscape photography is the same way. Mm -hmm. I, When I was really doing well in stock photography, which was the 1990s, mm -hmm. that to me was the boom years of stock photography. I found myself um, going and photographing the same locations. And even when you do a workshop, still going to line up and or you can just go to some place like Mesa Arch in Canyonlands. Mm -hmm. We all know where that is and most people have it on their checklist of must get shots. But if you want to make money, you you do something completely different. You go there after 2 feet of snow or you go somewhere else or something like that and uh that's a place now that is so crowded. I'll never go back. I've been there several times. Um and it's just really one example of You've got to do everything different than what you see if you want to make money. If you want to just print and put it on your wall, photograph as you please. Mm -hmm. But the markets dictate what you should be photographing. Yep. And the markets, and so, as far as stock photography, uh, I also did stock photography for many years, still do, but I make a fraction of what I used to. The stock photo market is prices are so far down now. Yeah. 
Same here. I mean, uh, again, the 90s, as far as I'm concerned, were the boom years, and I even touched into six figures yep. one year in just stock, but not anymore. Yep. You know, the sales are kind of few and far between. And uh, so I think a lot of people that are relied on that have moved on to other things that are not quite so saturated and competitive and right. yep. just you, know, you got to do what you got to do. But one of the things that I've done, rather than going back and photographing Mesa Arch or, you know, something, one of the icons in the landscape, is taking the landscape and creating conceptual photography. And that's crucial. If you are, um, even as an advertising photographer in the studio photographing something, a lot of times that client's going to have an idea that is conceptual mm. to sell that product or service or whatever it is. So even when it comes to stock photography, I think if you move beyond uh, just picture, taking a picture and get an idea to build a photo, you're going to do a lot better. And what I'm referring to is, and I'll pull up a couple shots here just to give you an idea. Well, some of the things that I did conceptually specific to landscape photography right off the bat was like this Christmas tree here. We moved to the mountains many, many 25 years ago. And so we wouldn't have any neighbors and I could be closer to the land where I lived. So this is just taking Christmas lights and decorating a tree in the forest and waiting for a snowstorm. And now this is an image that's been marketed and sold numerous times. So I was paid for my effort. But I might go somewhere else, grab a picture like this one here, which uh, is the Alvord Desert in Oregon. And and it's a standard photo. I just took a picture. But once I got home and started thinking, hmm, I could do something with that, I added this molten feel to the earth to make it look like it's going to erupt. Um, even this photograph here, which is technically a sunset, I just added an orange sunset filter, and these are actually just clouds beaten against the side of the mountain when I'm up high in elevation. Everybody thinks it's a forest fire, and as such, it's been marketed. As uh, a forest or fire. Or I should say, been, it's, it's done well in the market. Mm. Um, so lots of things like that, like, uh, you know, this is a model rocket, but I went out to the desert with my wife and I dressed her up kind of silly and, and made the rocket look like it was ready to launch into space. And these are just ideas that, that if you are so immersed in your photography, thinking, always thinking of another photograph, you might see something that's like, ooh, I'm going to take a picture of that now because I got an idea of what I can do with that photograph. This is what you um, a photo would go beyond what is actually contained in the photo, the concept right. that it implies Correct. to the viewer. Yeah. And yeah, and 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 if they're not even real photographs. And that is what is so amazing about digital photography and Photoshop mm -hmm. and what we can do now. I mean, I miss shooting film, especially with my four by five, but the things that we can do are amazing. Yep. And and here's another shot just to give you an idea. Conceptually, uh, this is Three different shots, a roadway, stormy clouds from Arkansas, and a sign from near where I live. And I created a photo I call the road to nowhere. So, again, concept is big. And I take pictures of everything these days. And i uh, got the iPhone 11 Pro now in my pocket everywhere I go. Oh, there's a potential shot. <laughs> and put it into, into the files. So... You know, that's kind of the stock photography thing. and, and um, But as a professional photographer, I think you need to be really well-versed in a lot of different things. And uh, I would love to be, uh, you know, a David Munch and, and be wandering around photographing. But the days of the market supporting that lifestyle, to me, are pretty much over. Yep. And uh, so I think it's really good for people who want to get in photography and stay in it to be well-versed, meaning you can shoot a product shot, you can shoot a portrait, you can uh, go shoot a hotel, all of that kind of stuff, I think is what will keep you fed as a photographer. I think that's what the uh, our keynote last year basically was saying, that uh, you've got to keep reinventing yourself as a photographer. Exactly. You can't get stale. Once you get so comfortable that it just becomes rote, it's time to move on right. and go to mm -hmm. the... Always going to slow down. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be another recession where everybody's looking for work. It's you just got to have your hands in so many different things, and um, you know, as far as survival, right, or 
continuing a, a long lasting career as a photographer. But, yep. Um, one of the things that I've always done when I when I travel, we took some time off and went RV in full time and just wrapped that up a couple years ago. Hmm. But pretty much anywhere I went, I was always looking for opportunities. And uh, one of the things I did was I ended up in Tombstone, Arizona, just because I wanted to see it. Mm-hmm. You know, love the cowboy life and all that kind of stuff. And pretty soon I see all these guys in character outfits because they are technically actors or gunfighters in a town that makes that survives on western shows and the whole western theme and town and that kind of stuff yeah, so you can't get much more western than tombstone <laughs> yeah so this guy right here was standing in the street and i just went up and said i'm a photographer can i photograph you and he uh said hold on introduce me to his boss this is how they get people to come to their show is they stand out in the street Handing out tickets, let you take pictures with them, all that kind of stuff. He gets his boss. His boss comes back and said, yeah, we'd love some photography. So the next day, I was there with all my lighting gear, lighting them on their set before they opened and created these portraits right here. And uh, it's these types of things you have to do is create your own opportunities. Mm -hmm. Again, surviving as a pro. I mean, that's kind of what I'm talking about today is is how to be a pro and and, uh, how to survive at it is – you know, uh, my buddy Brian Peterson told me decades ago, he said, the best assignments are the ones you create. Yep. So if you want to work for National Geographic, find a writer, team up, and pitch a story to them mm-hmm. or any other magazine or any or a company. If you got an idea how they could better do their product or in-house photography, you got to pitch them on it. And uh, so I've always looked opportunities that way too like I did with these cowboys here and uh, and I think that's really really crucial so and it's, it's not like I was going to say it's something we're actually hoping up that uh, Jay Graman has talked about is a possibility next year of um, having the Black Hills photo shootout at 1880 town which is oh, yeah. I believe east of uh, Rapid City which would be yeah. perfect for that. I think yeah, they supply absolutely. the costumes and everything there. Right, right. Yeah, that's great. People love to photograph that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think if I ever restart my workshop business, I'll probably add something like that somewhere. And uh, uh, throughout the country somewhere, there's everybody loves to photograph cowboys. Absolutely. Really good. Well, that's so, one reason why we enjoy going out to South Dakota. That's <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm so disappointed. Oh, God. You know, we're all disappointed in the situation that the country's in right now, and that I totally get it. And it's, I was really looking forward to going out there. Yes. And because there's so much out there in the Black Hills and the Badlands and stuff to do after the workshop. Oh, yeah, right. So many opportunities to do during the workshop. Fred yeah. and I were actually planning on driving out. We, in fact, we were going to do a pre-workshop at Teddy Roosevelt National Park in mm-hmm. North Dakota and spend yeah. a little time in the area. And just have some fun as well as work. But, but it uh, probably yeah. worked out well because it was going to be in Sturgis. And you see what's going on in Sturgis now. The oh, uh, rally, a uh, quarter of a million people descending on that. Uh, I'm not sure how safe yeah. that's going to be as far as... Uh, well... So it's hard to say, yeah. but uh, just watching what's on TV is enough to convince me of what I should be doing right now. So yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I hear you. We're here doing it. There you <laughs> go. Well, I, I know that you looks like you have a, a lot of different styles of photography. As you said, if need be, reinvent yourself. If need be, create your own opportunity. And those are excellent things yeah. for us to, to hear. But if one day you said, all right, I get a day or a week to choose my favorite photography to go and do just for a week. I'm not worried about yeah. it. Somebody just gave me $100,000, said, take a week off and go do whatever photography. What would that photography be? Oh, I'd be hitting the road, hook the trailer up to the truck, and be off uh, in Teddy Roosevelt or uh, Rainier or, you know, just Lassen's. Have, just all the national a couple parks. Hours. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Just, just more to be out there. I, I already realized the challenges of the market. So it's interesting that I even say that because I was taught at Brooks Institute 
and you are always thinking about the business side of being a photographer. Mm-hmm. And so there's some things I love to photograph, but I sit and think, well, I'm not going to bother doing that anymore. There's no money in it anymore. And despite the fact that's true, the more I think about it, it's like, well, now it's time to do photography for the love of it. Not that I haven't loved every single picture I took generally, but without the business mindset driving what I do, that's exactly what I would do. I've always been a hiker, I dabbled in climbing and backpacking and rafting and all kinds of stuff like that. And then I thoroughly enjoyed back in the 80s and 90s photographing those adventures that I love to be doing and in between shooting the landscape because I could make money at it. Right. Okay. And, uh, but you know, I might be on, on board to do another grand Canyon rafting and then sometime in the next three years with a buddy and it won't be for, uh, necessarily for the photography and it won't be for the YouTube video. <laughs> I have to <laughs> laugh at that, that, uh, I yeah. had several cameras and video cameras when we did the uh, grand Canyon and, I didn't know it at the end that the guides that were on the raft were actually had a pull going on how long those cameras are going to last through the trip. Fortunately, they oh. all survived, <laughs> as did we. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, I've been down several times, and every one of them is just a life adventure. I mean, there's mm-hmm. just it's just an absolute awesome trip and awesome place to be. And somewhere down there is one of my Canon EOS ones or one end uh, when the strap on my underwater housing broke and I didn't oh, know it. No. We were uh, we were thrashed in a rapid and pushed up on a rock and took a couple hours to get off the rock and then I'm ready to take pictures and it's gone. Oh, it's like, geez. Oh, my. Oh, oh yeah. No. It's probably floated to the Gulf of Mexico <clears throat> and uh, maybe it'll oh, show geez. up in Fiji We'll someday. go looking for it. Well, you never know. We <laughs> have had lots and lots of stories recently of people that have found cameras that were lost two or three years in the cards in them we're still good so yeah don't, don't lose hope <laughs> yeah and since we live on the gulf side anyway like i said we'll keep an eye out yep okay if Case something washes up, up this way yeah that's a long way from <laughs> that would yeah but if it made it to the gulf to the you Atlantic never know. And around it. yeah so who yeah, knows uh, good adventures and you know i did well with that type of photography in those days mm-hmm. and but now I'd rather just shoot a YouTube video or something like that. Yep. For, for Well, I'll still do stills. I can't yep. say I won't photograph. That'd be silly. But but, uh, but I was able to turn my love for adventure into pretty thriving part of my business. And, and uh, back in the day, landing clients like Camelback and Nike and stuff like that, where I then would get paid shoots because I could show them that I could shoot that type of stuff. Yep. And, uh, and that was a, really a lot of fun. And, and that's why I feel really fortunate about the career I've had. But everybody that wants to be a photographer professionally, you know, they make their own career. Mm-hmm. It's totally up to them. The phone doesn't ring unless you make it ring. Yep. And, yeah, Rick uh, Salmon has done uh, you. I'm sure you're familiar with Rick. Oh, yeah. His, uh, I think one of his favorite expressions, it takes a lot of uh, peanuts to feed an elephant. And he has lots that's of... Right income sources of various things and he says you don't wait yep. for it to happen you go out there and make it happen so yeah exactly well and that's a transition that i have absolutely witnessed in the last oh, probably 15 years is that and, and a lot of it's got to do with the internet too in some ways or the the beginning of the internet but it's there's not really one thing i can think of for, let me give you an example there's a photographer uh, I was in Portland for 20 some years and uh, with a studio and there was a photographer there who did nothing but photograph shoes for Nike. That's mm-hmm. it. And he was so busy, he finally hired two or three photographers to work for him and then he didn't have to do it anymore. He just did the billing and all that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. did very, very well. But I really don't know that you can do that type of stuff. Uh, my computer wants to restart. Oh. Uh, can't really do that. I don't think there's enough of any one thing that's going to feed somebody very, very well. So I've mm-hmm. always looked at it over the last 10 to 15 years as evolving into a business in which there's many revenue streams. They're just not all big. And you should pursue every single one of them, mm-hmm. which is why I still do assignments. I still try to do some stock, but I also... I'm doing a few workshops and also doing online classes, and you got to keep yourself diverse. And it's really the same mindset from the very beginning of me being a photographer. 
I wanted to be nothing more than a landscape photographer like my hero, David Munch. Um, but that reality check hit pretty quickly after I got out of school and started my own business. And uh, then I started doing magazine work. And then, and, and this is another important point that I've experienced and probably most photographers do is that uh, the, the idea of one thing leads to another. So you should mm -hmm. always maximize your opportunities to create more opportunities and 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 I'll give you an example I photographed the camelback catalog the hydrating backpack deal uh, years ago and as soon as I was done with that the ad agent called me up and said hey we got a hotel that needs a new brochure can you shoot a hotel of course I mean I was trained in commercial photography shot that then the next time was a huge ad campaign for safety glass company that made safety glasses for industrial work environments and stuff like that. They're all completely unrelated. Mm. But it's one of the reasons that I feel diversifying your portfolio and your ability is critical to survival more than ever. And uh, that's kind of the one thing leads to another idea that I mentioned. It's you just got to push, push, push. And uh, you just don't know who's going to hire you based on that promotional mailer you sent. Yep. So those of you out there who have ambitions to be a professional photographer, take that advice. Take notes. <laughs> and I would highly recommend that you sign up for uh, Charlie's virtual workshops coming up That's right. here at the end of September. We're going to be putting the link down here in the show notes to uh, the registration page. Go out and check out Charlie's uh, your workshop website as well as the... Um, your gallery, I assume, and your yeah, the, main I got page. a portfolio, and then I got the online course websites. Yeah, sounds great. Well, do you have anything that you want to add to uh, summarize or words of advice for a budding photographer? As my friend Brian Peterson says, just keep shooting, just keep going, but start thinking beyond just the capture and. Uh, you know, like, oh, I'll show you this portrait here real quick. This is my wife. I shot this probably 10 years ago. And I thought it was really cool then. I promoted with it. But then I recently this year redid it. And you can see a completely different look to the same digital file. Mm -hmm. And, again, I love that. So think the same way. You might have gone out and done a cool digital capture of something. But where can you take it once you get on the computer? And everybody knows that only half the process is the picture you take. The other half is what you do on the computer and how you develop your photographs. So Maybe even so, more than half. <laughs> exactly. But look at everything as a potential photograph. Now, that's just a doorknob on a red door. Yep. That's kind of interesting. But what, what can you do with that doorknob on a red door as far as creating a final image? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's adding a flash unit to increase contrast or oversaturating it a little bit, you know, that type of thing. And think out of the box. We used to have a photographer here who said he called it getting stupid. <laughs> he said just yeah. try something yeah. that yeah, try just something doesn't that... make any sense, but you never know. So, That's right. Well, That's right. You know, you've given us some great words to kind of live by on that because I think Jim and I agree wholeheartedly. You've got to make things happen for yourself. The photography… Exactly. Yes, it's for you, but also, like you said, if you're going to make it a business, you've got to know what areas your photography is going to capture for interest that is going to turn into a paycheck. That's right. That's so. right. And one more thing I'll say, based on what you just mentioned, is that when you do your marketing, you are a specialist to whoever mm -hmm. you're marketing to. So I'm not going to send landscape photos to a company like Intel, for example. Right. Because they don't have any use for landscapes, but I'm going to show the clean room shots that I've done for other clients. And uh, you're a, no, no matter what variety of subjects you like to do, and I like to photograph everything, but I don't market everything. You have to do your marketing as a niche specialist. Mm -hmm. And so well, kind of a add-on to what you just mentioned is you've well, got great. to convince them that all you do is photograph shoes, and then they'll hire you. <laughs> That's all you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Charlie, I sure appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking your time. Well, and, thank you. I uh, enjoyed it. I wish we were going to be getting together here in another month, but uh, we'll see you 
see you virtually yeah. anyway. Right. Well, let's cross our fingers for next year sometime. Oh, absolutely, there you go. yes. There you I'm go. ready to go. Stand fingers, crossed. toes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Thank you no so problem. much.